Hey, Jacob, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. All right, so today I feel like I'm getting vulnerable with our audience. Ooh, good. <laughs> but right, dish. I feel like whenever I go to the gym, which is not that often, but if I do, it's like if I don't have my phone with me, it it mm. sucks. Like, totally. I will probably leave. <laughs> but if I am trying to stick to it, I will like drudge through my workout. And have you ever done the same thing? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I'm to the point now where, uh, if I, if I'm not wearing my whoop or if I'm not like carrying my phone on a run, I'm not even going to do it because I feel like I'm not going to get credit. Mm -hmm. It's like if, um, if I can't get credit for the workout, I might as well not do it. And I know that's not true because like it's for your body, but I feel like I need to keep score, and so it's I'm absolutely dependent on my phone. Yeah, so I feel like most people feel that way, and mm -hmm. that's one of these kind of universal truths that we right. found in some of our market research in the past few months, especially as COVID's opened up. We found that fitness equipment mm -hmm. represents a, a device, or excuse me, a product segment where people have a ton of dwell time, yeah. and where they really, really depend on their media via their phone or their tablet or whatever right. to get them through it. Yeah, they're using intensive applications too so not only are they have a lot of dwell time where they're mm -hmm. using the treadmill for a long time but they're they're running streaming video potentially they're doing uh, integrations with their uh, wearables so that they're tracking heart rate and uh, pulse ox and things like that while they're working out mm -hmm. strain so it is these are heavy applications people drain their phone a lot when they're working out mm -hmm. and with that we saw a huge um, opportunity and we see a big um, a big opportunity in the space for some of the major OEMs for fitness equipment to bring together two of the world's um, you know most prevalent technologies and sure. can you explain what those are and what we're kind of forecasting the two technologies you're referencing are Qi wireless charging Mm -hmm. for you know people use it with their phones is you know over a billion phones today in the market that have Qi wireless charging in it uh, spanning Apple Samsung Motorola everything mm -hmm. Xiaomi everything and then the other one is something that's even existed longer which is NFC technology so NFC most people use it um, as their Apple wallet or their uh, Google pay or I might have inverted those words but the idea of paying for your starbucks coffee just by holding your phone next to the reader mm -hmm. that's based on nfc near field coupling technology mm -hmm. it's a very secure way of transferring data between devices that are close to each other mm -hmm. so when you um couple wi wireless charging chi charging with nfc technology you've opened up this world of opportunities that don't otherwise exist without both of those technologies being partnered together mm -hmm. so for example you can do a uh, really rich data transfer mm -hmm. so you could do biometric data from the person's phone mm -hmm. let's say they're wearing a polar chest strap that attaches yeah. to the phone that can also feed the equipment or the equipment can feed the phone yeah. while also getting a charge. You can potentially stream your content from your phone to the larger screen yep. on the fitness equipment. Mm -hmm. You can do all sorts of tracking and potentially gamification if mm -hmm. you're a fitness brand. Not only do they want to build content, but they want to build habits. Yeah. And I think that benefits the, the, the people too if they get kind of an addictive habit to working out where they're going to come more often, they're going to push themselves a little bit more. Um, so there's so much that opens up when you have both power and data mm -hmm. all in one place. Mm -hmm. And finally, if you're a, a manufacturer of treadmills or stationary bikes or workout equipment, what it also allows you to do, what we're seeing with our customers that are doing this, is it allows you to control where people use their personal devices. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you go to the gym, you'll see people throwing it in a cup holder, resting it on the side, putting it up top, using their pop socket to like hang it. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, it's uh, you know the wild west of where do you put this thing? <laughs> But companies are taking control over their industrial design mm -hmm. by giving a dedicated place mm -hmm. uh, to put your phone. Put mm -hmm. your phone here, and it brings this benefit of data and power. You're mm -hmm. going to leave with a more full battery than you came. Mm -hmm. But that gives so much more control over like attention, like where do people put their eyes? Um, can they build better content that way? Can they uh, piggyback off of this dual device system, mm -hmm. the treadmill plus the phone? So I think that... Um, the, the forward thinking companies on this are absolutely down the path of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, there's already wireless chargers on treadmills out in the market, but mm -hmm. wireless power plus NFC is actually a game changer. Absolutely, and we're really excited to see uh, who comes out with this next. All right. Stay tuned. Yep. <laughs>